Hello, Father Kevin. Good, Good to afternoon, see you Tom. again. Good to see you. Good well, to see you, it's it's, uh, it's May. It's the time for roses, and uh, most pertinently, we are halfway through the year of mercy. Indeed. So any uh, any thoughts for us you have today on on this sort of halfway mark of the year? Yes, there's a couple of things I'd like to share. Uh, I don't want to just go over again and regurgitate what we've said before. Sure. Um, but there are a couple of things that have uh, come up in recent weeks uh, because I follow Pope Francis, and I think that they're, they're very Vincentian, and it, it's worth our hearing about them. So that's what I'd like to share today. Okay. Well, if you could just uh, take us back a little bit and, and remind us what mercy is. Yeah. It's a difficult word in English. Very difficult to get hold of it. In other languages, much easier. Uh, we don't really have a, we, we have a misunderstanding, I think, in the word, in, in, in English, in the word mercy, and we associate it with pity. Mm. But mercy means really having a heart for the poor. And the Latin expresses that very well, misericordia, core being heart, misery, the poor. And that's what mercy is about. So better words than uh, mer mercy and pity in English are words like compassion and empathy. Right. So we have empathy and compassion. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a taste of what those cover? Yeah, I think there's two, two aspects to uh, empathy and compassion. Uh, one aspect has, has to do very much with this idea of having a heart for the poor, of mm -hmm. being compassionate towards others and being compassionate towards oneself, towards the poverty in oneself. Um, and when you have that for the, for the poor, you're kind of your stance towards them is basically one of empathy, that you're putting yourself continually in their shoes and seeing things from their perspective rather than from another perspective. And when we see things from the perspective of the poor, then we see reality in a different way than if we see it from a selfish perspective. So that's one aspect of it. The other is similar in a way, but it has to do less with poverty in that physical, corporal sense and more with uh, forgiveness. It has to do with our own need for forgiveness, and it has to do as well with our uh, own need to be forgiving. And uh, it means kind of acknowledging that, that we're not perfect, and that we have done wrong, and facing that aspect of ourselves, mm. and at the same time facing sometimes our uh, um, sense of revenge or whatever it is that that hurt in us that we want to cover up and not face up to and when we face up to that hurt then we can begin to move in the direction of moving towards forgiveness of whoever has hurt us so those are the other aspects of it okay well and again how, how do these uh, you've got empathy and you've got uh, living in, in a, a life of forgiveness both mm -hmm. for yourself and, and for others how would you relate that to our, our Vincentian vocation? Okay. I think much comes back to the, the home visit. And uh, in the home visit, there's a need, I think, before we actually go, go into a home to connect to that compassion within us and to realize that's there, to, to, to enkindle that compassion within ourselves. Maybe saying a, a, a prayer to the Holy Spirit that he, he, he might enkindle his love in us, the mm -hmm. love that is compassion. So when we go in then to the home, we go in uh, with a positive stance, a compassionate stance, and we're open to whatever the people in the home have to share with us. So that's kind of one aspect of it. The, the other aspect of forgiveness is perhaps after the visit, in going over the visit, uh, we, we might realize, well, that didn't go as well as, as I hoped. Perhaps I should have been more sensitive. Perhaps I should have listened more and talked less. Perhaps I should have followed the, the person I visited, their agenda, and not my own. Also, it could be that one comes out a little bit hurt because the person that one visited said something that upset one, and uh, the, one wanted to snap back and one didn't, which was good, but still one was hurt. Right. So there's the need then to... Uh, perhaps get into a position where one can at least offer, in an imaginary way, forgiveness to that person, so one doesn't carry that hurt with one to the next right. home one visits. So it's really a mechanism to, to have the, the freedom to, to, to live our ministry or conduct our ministry in, 
and to be honest with how we how well we entered into it and how successful we were in it. That's a very w- good would way. That be That's a, a very good way, way, way of putting it. Yeah, very good way of putting it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have um, you know this heart for the poor, and again this this idea of, of forgiveness is kind of mm-hmm. these dichotomies in which we enter into in our in our vocation. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, as when we started, you mentioned Pope Francis. Yeah. And it seems like every week he's coming out with new um, new ways of seeing our faith and living our faith. Uh, anything m- most recently that you feel would be worth sharing from from our Holy Father? Yes, indeed. Yes, it really is amazing. Every day, as you say, there's something new that comes out. Um, what struck me uh, was uh, his, his idea of what mercy was, the way that he explained it. And he said there are three stages to mercy. The first stage is being physically close to the person. And that does something, being physically close. Because you see the person without any filter. You know, and he was not about previously about smelling the sheep and smelling like the sheep. You have mm-hmm. to be that close to the person. Then naturally then there arises empathy because you realize this person is a human being, a frail human being just like me. I've received all kinds of gifts that probably this person hasn't received. And then one reaches out in empathy to the person, one puts oneself in their shoes. If I had to deal with the same stuff that this person had to deal with, I'd be in the same position. So there grows a natural empathy towards the person in their particular form of poverty. So that's the second stage. And then following from it right away, there is a sense of uh, consolation. One's heart is, is, is melted a little bit by that, and a sense of what the Jesuits call consolation, which means a taste of heaven. So that, I think, summed up very, very well what this year of mercy is about, for us to go close to the people, for us to experience the empathy that comes from that action, and with the empathy, this taste of heaven, right. and we discover what our calling is. Right. So it really comes back to uh, the, the value of the home visit. The value of the home visit. And that sense of physical connection to people, mm-hmm. not just the, the transaction. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, The one's there not just physically, but one, one's there in a, in a deeper way. One's there with sensitivity right. and willingness to listen. Right. Uh, the other thing he's come out with that, that struck me as being very important is he's, he's kind of been defining God, if you like. And he came out with the, with, uh, he's trying to get away from some of the scholastic definitions. So he has said that God is not theology. Then he's come out last week, God is not liturgical rubrics. God is mercy. And by mercy, God being mercy, it's not a quality of God. It's his very essence of God. It's his substance of God. And God is active in being merciful. And when we are exercising mercy by having a heart for the poor or seeking forgiveness or giving forgiveness, God is in us and we are in God. And that's the God that we're asked to develop in our own lives, in our own hearts, and to enjoy that presence. Yeah. God is mercy. God is mercy. Well, that's, that's a wonderful uh, thought to end our, our discussion this month. And, uh, and thank you again. Thank you, Tom. Thank you.